Hey there, fellow 5e players. I wanted to show you this uh, spell measuring uh, wand that I made for my game. Now I play uh, gridless, okay, so I don't use grids usually, and this is perfect for measuring for that. But it can also be useful for grids because on the long distance spells it can take a lot of time to count the different grids for like, you know, something like 120 feet range or 150 foot range or something like that. So this can be very useful in those types of games too. Let's take a moment and talk about the different 5e spell ranges, right? There is a touch, which that's obvious, you don't need to measure that. There is a 5 feet, which is basically right next to the miniature, so that's not really needed. It's just the higher level uh, spells that need to be measured. You start with 10 feet, and that's 2 inches, so every inch is 5 feet. You, start, you have 15 feet, which is 3 inches. You have 20 feet, which is 4 inches. Then you jump up to 30 feet, which is 6 inches. And then it starts getting progressively higher, right? So after 30, there's 60, which is double that. So that's 12 inches. Next, you have 90, which is 18 inches. And then you have 120, which is 24 inches. And you have 150, which is 30 inches. And that's the maximum size I did the wand, the measuring wand, because it starts to get kind of crazy after that. It goes to like 500 feet, which would make a way too large stick, and then like a mile and that kind of thing. So I just kept it to the maximum of 150 foot range, which is what most of your spells will be anyway. All right, guys, uh, construction of the measuring wand really couldn't be easier. I just used a 5 16th by 36 inch long dowel, right? And then I cut uh, the six inches off because it needs to be 30 inches long, okay? Then I just sanded the dowel and then marked on uh, one inch increments on the dowel with a pencil. The key to this craft is this little pipe cutter, and if you don't have one yourself, you can pick it up my link below. But uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put the stick in it and then twist it, and it'll do a marking on the stick, on the inch increments that we marked on the stick. And you want to tighten it up just enough so you get like a nice indentation on the stick, but you, of course you don't want to cut through the stick, right? And then just go down the stick and continue to do that until the entire stick is marked on the inch increments. I then gave the stick another sanding because, you know, sometimes little jags of wood will pop out or something when you do this process. So you want to make sure that the stick is uh, smooth. I found these uh, color-shifting acrylic craft paints, and I thought, oh, those would be so cool for the wand, as well as other projects. You can pick them up at my link below. Uh, and then I started painting them on the spell increments that I wanted to have for the stick. Now, refer back to the, uh, the spell increments that I talked about earlier, and that's what I did. So for the first, you know, I did the first 10 feet, and then I did 15 feet, and 20, and 30, and 60, and you can see that I just kept uh, going down the stick, adding a new color at the different increments so that they would be easy to differentiate from each other on the stick, right? It'd uh, be very visual. And I also decided to mark each increment with a Sharpie. Just go around the stick and kind of twist it in your hand and put this Sharpie in the notch of the stick and just twist it and that would fill it in uh, and mark the increment. Also I decided to put the uh, spell range on there so it'd be easy to look at the stick and see the spell range if you didn't uh, hadn't memorized that yet. I decided to decorate the wand with these kind of end caps. One is a cone shape and one is kind of a rounded shape. I also decided it'd be fun to put like a multicolored gem on each end also and that's really facilitated by the E6000 which is a great adhesive for gluing different types of materials together like wood and metal and plastic. All right, friends, here's the wand at my table in action, and you can see I've got the 10, 15, 20, 30 increments there. Then it goes jumps to 60, then here we go to 90, then we got a 120, and maxes out at 150. So I, now I put that uh, cone on the end because I want you to know which direction that the wand is pointing. All right, crafters, I want to show you the color shifting on the wand, and uh, isn't that cool as I kind of twist it back and forth? You can see that color shifting like an iridescent beetle back or something. So very cool. Got the little cap on the end there. Now go make your own. Get out of here.